If you are a German citizen over the age of 18, you should by now have received a notification of the federal election due in just a couple of weeks. You don't need to register to vote. Assuming that you have, as is legally required, registered your address with the local authority, you are already on the electoral roll. The notification will include a form that you can fill in if you want to apply for a postal vote or a mail-in ballot, depending on which version of English you speak, or you can apply for it online or even go in person to your local electoral office with your ID card. If you vote the traditional way, you will need to take with you your ID card or passport and the notification that you received. That notification will also explain to you where your polling station is. If you have lost that notification, then don't worry, just your ID card on its own should normally be enough. According to Article 38 of the Basic Law, which is Germany's constitution, the election must have the following characteristics. It is universal, meaning that every adult citizen is eligible to vote. It is direct, meaning that there is no electoral college. It is free, meaning that all voters are allowed to make their own decisions about who to vote for. There is equal representation, meaning that all votes carry the same weight regardless of who cast them. And it is secret, meaning that it is impossible to discover how any specific individual voted. Germany uses a method called mixed member proportional representation. The ballot paper is in two halves and you vote once in each half. Your first vote goes to a local candidate, your second to a party list. The first vote is easy to explain. Germany is divided into 299 constituencies, each with about a quarter of a million German citizens. Each constituency elects a representative to the Bundestag, who is then said to have received a direct mandate. So far, this is a simple first-past-the-post system, as used in, for example, the United Kingdom. The problem with this system is that very often the seats allocated do not reflect the popular vote. For example, in the 2019 general election in the UK, the Conservative Party received 44% of the votes, but got 56% of the seats. So this is where the party list vote comes in. In each of the 16 states, the parties fielding candidates also draw up a list of further candidates. They don't represent specific constituencies, but are, as it were, in reserve. Once all the direct mandates have been allocated, the attention turns to the party list votes. Now, the idea is that if a party gets, for example, 44% of the party list votes, they should get 44% of the seats in the Bundestag. So representatives are added from the various party lists until all the proportions are correct. And you might be wondering, why have a separate vote for that? Well, it may be that your favourite party isn't fielding a candidate in your constituency, or that the candidate they're fielding is just useless as a politician. You might want to vote for the best local candidate regardless of party affiliation, but also have the opportunity to indicate which party you think has the best overall policies. In theory, this gives you the best of both worlds. You have a directly elected local candidate who identifies with and hopefully understands your area, which is one of the greatest strengths of the first-past-the-post system. But you also have proportional representation. However, there is one major flaw, and it's predicted to cause a particularly large problem this time around. And I do mean large. It can result in a stupidly large Bundestag. Ideally, there should be a roughly equal number of direct mandates and party list mandates, resulting in a Bundestag of about 600 members. But it's usually bigger, and part of the problem is overhang seats. It often happens that one or more parties win more direct seats than their party list vote would normally qualify them for. In the past, this has been ignored, and the Bundestag has typically included a relatively small number of these overhang seats. But a few years ago, the Constitutional Court ruled this practice unconstitutional. And so, in 2013, it had to be changed. Now, if a party ends up with overhang seats, more representatives are added from all of the other party lists to make up the numbers. And this is why the current Bundestag, which was elected in 2017, has 
709 members, about 100 more than would otherwise be normal. By comparison, the US House of Representatives only has 435 voting members. But that's the system that we have, at least until everybody can agree on something better. So that's basically it for this video. You might want to check out a video I made a couple of weeks ago in which I listed some of the most important parties in Germany, and in the near future I will be making a video about coalitions and the appointment of the Chancellor, so watch out for that. Until then, goodbye and happy voting. Oh, by the way, did you notice? New microphone. Yay! Germany uses a method called mixed member proportional. Yeah, that's the one.